One of the problems in trial is sometimes evidence is presented that is not supposed to be presented. Inadmissible evidence. Um, and of course, you can, you can state that, that, uh, that this evidence is, is out there, and then the judge will say that's inadmissible, uh, and then they'll tell the jurors to forget it. Well, that doesn't happen. You can't forget things. <laughs> and usually, uh, if they tell you to forget it, you, that's the one thing that you remember. And this is known as thought suppression phenomenon. The idea that the more you try to forget it, the more you remember it. Uh, so it's the way that uh, it works in trials. Let me see. Waste some time here. Jury deliberations can lessen the impact of, uh, impact of inadmissible evidence because they keep going over what they're not supposed to be talking about. And because of that, uh, they think about <clears throat> how that evidence uh, either proves or disproves something, and then they have to say, well, yeah, but we can't use this evidence, therefore, it, we can't use this evidence. <laughs> so because of that, uh, it actually becomes very important in the, in the trial because they are saying, I can't use this, therefore this has to be our, our conclusion. Experts typically testify about specialized knowledge with which most jurors are not familiar. Uh, the concern is that because jurors lack rigorous analytical skills, they may use uh, unsystematic or effortless uh, processing such as experiential, their, whatever they've experienced in their lives. Uh, leading them to uh, processing, they, they use this type of processing instead of uh, uh, analysis to attend to uh, peripheral aspects of expert's testimony rather than the content of the testimony. A lot of times the testimony is so complex that they don't understand what, what, what the experts said. And because of that they only get little bitty pieces of it and since they only get little pieces of it they really can't analyze the information uh, the evidence uh, because of the, uh, uh, their, their lack of no understanding of, of the, uh, are you okay? Okay, <laughs> you're walking in. Yeah. Are you cold? No. Okay. All right, you're just moving funny. Concern not supported, uh, the concern, this doesn't really support the evidence. Uh, most individuals who uh, hear expert testimony uh, eventually, it is presented in a manner that, uh, uh, that they understand, that they can understand. And that's the job of the lawyers. The reality is lawyers aren't the brightest bulbs in the bunch. They are not the smartest people in the world. Um, <clears throat> they don't understand things either. Uh, medicine, for example. Lawyers don't understand medicine. Why would they? They are not medical people. Uh, so usually what happens when they get an expert uh, the, they, they will get the expert to explain it so that ever, anybody can understand it. And it's usually because the lawyer's not real bright. Well, they're lawyers. They, they understand the law and they don't understand everything else. Now, the concern about uh, expert testimony, uh, expert testimony will mesmerize the jurors, causing them to discount their own common sense and rely too heavily on the opinions of the experts. Do jurors place undue weight on testimony from experts? A number of studies show that jurors do not defer to experts, but that, that, but that expert testimony exerts a small, reliable effect on their decisions. So despite the fact there's expert testimony, a lot of times they don't, uh, uh, it, it doesn't have undue weight. They still use their own understanding of, of what's going on. Uh, the jurors do. Uh, we, we make these jurors sound pretty damn smart. Um, <clears throat> and, and maybe they are. Uh, when, they, when they sit in a, a jury box, of course, uh, maybe they empty their minds of everything else, of all their other knowledge. Judges who ultimately decide what expert test, uh, evidence is admitted into court uh, may allow unreliable expert testimony to be admitted into evidence. And this is Daubert versus Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals in 1993. Really interesting case. Uh, Dow uh, Pharmaceuticals. This had to do with uh, Agent Orange. 
O is right. <laughs> and so the Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals were, uh, were presenting testimony that uh, 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 out-of-date uh, uh, research, it was uh, questionable research, but he allowed it to be presented anyway. And the reason he did uh, was so to, to show the jury uh, that there were good ideas and bad ideas. And so they allowed the, the bad testimony to be presented. And it was kind of a dirty trick by the judge because what he did, there, were, there, were expert, uh, there was expert testimony from the defense and there, then there was expert testimony from the pharmaceutical company and they were very much different. Uh, but, of course, the jury could see the effects of Agent Orange on the individuals that had brought the suit. And because of that, they, sh they showed that the uh, uh, that Dow Chemical, that uh, Dow Pharmaceuticals, uh, were uh, presenting material that uh, was, it was tainted research. And because of that, of course, the, uh, the findings were, were a lot more extreme for the defense. Are jurors able to distinguish between reliable scientific evidence and junk science? Uh, in general, jurors uh, have been found to be unable uh, to distinguish valid from flawed research. And this is, of course, a problem that we're having with global warming. Uh, global warming, uh, pe uh, pe we keep talking about global warming. Um, the vast majority of scientists say that global warming exists. Uh, but then you have some scientists, and it's a relatively few, who say that global warming doesn't exist, that it's just the natural change of temperature uh, of, of the Earth. Uh, I had a, um, my boss at, uh, at Ashford uh, was a biochemist, and he claimed that global warming was, was a hoax, uh, which was, I found it kind of, kind of curious that he did since, since he was a scientist. So here he is, we've got, we've got one guy, unfortunately he's in charge, uh, and we have all these other scientists who look at the, the information and say, no, global warming really does exist. But we have that one, that one scientist. And like I said, he was in charge. And because of that, what he did was, uh, when he started firing people, and Ashford, we, we uh, actually closed the campus. When he started firing people, he fired all the people that were, the more, were, that were more adamant about global warming, which is, I know, it was a dirty trick. It was a really ugly situation. Um, <clears throat> he didn't fire me because, of course, I was, I, I was in the psychology department and we weren't the hard sciences. He kept telling me we were the soft sciences, so my head was softer than the hard sciences, uh, scientists' heads. And therefore, he didn't fire me because I was, I was a dummy anyway, since I was a psychologist instead of a <laughs> scientist. I know, it's stupid. It's why didn't you fire me? <laughs> I didn't punch him hardly at all. He was also a former CIA ass. He was an ass. He, was an ass. he thought he knew everything. Uh, serious weakness uh, for many jurors uh, is their inability to understand their instructions. Uh, the instructions are often full of legal terms that are unfamiliar to lay people uh, when they. Uh, give the case to the jury, they have to tell the jury what the uh, legal precedents are. So they say, this is a murder trial, uh, in this, uh, uh, because this is a murder trial, uh, you have to prove beyond any reasonable doubt that this individual killed this other individual, and that they, it was premeditated murder. You know, it's, it's one of those kinds of things. So you've got all these, uh, all these words uh, that people have to interpret. Uh, some people can't interpret them. Uh, some people can only interpret them uh, from their own point of view. And for that reason, some jurors have a difficult time in, in uh, understanding the, the, uh, uh, the law. <clears throat> but the, then again, the law is written for lawyers. Um, in the law, uh, words are very important. If you remember, uh, what did Clinton say? Clinton was being impeached. And he had, he had uh, uh, oral sex with Monica Lewinsky. And he said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. And, and, and he did. Well, obviously he did. <clears throat> anyway, 
Uh, he did have he did have sex with this woman, but when he said sexual relations, that refers to genital genital sex. I know. So when he said I did not have sexual relations with that woman, what he meant was I did not have genital genital sex with this woman, and he never did, evidently. It's one of the things she was complaining about. It all depends on, what did he say? <laughs> he was uh, in his de deposition and he said, uh, it all depends on what the definition of is is. <laughs> I know, it's a verb. <laughs> Unless he's trying to talk math and say he's adding. <laughs> uh, anyway, he did not get impeached. We'll see what happens with with Trump. Uh, okay, uh, I don't know, if, you know, neither of you guys are in here when we were talking about the shooting in the, the Walmart parking lot. Turns oh, yeah. out that, yeah, Levi found out that it, uh, it, it, it was in the news for one day and then it was gone. Huh. It turned out that uh, the guy that shot the couple and then shot himself, uh, he was the husband of the woman in the car. And the man in the car, they were, there was a man and a woman in the other car. It was her boyfriend. Hmm. And so the husband shot the, his wife and his wife's boyfriend. That's what right. happens. So they put it in the news because they thought it was like another mass shooting? They, yeah, they thought it was, you know, just a, one of those random shootings like what happened in El Paso where the guy was is wandering it, around. Is there another one that's happened in New Orleans? Was it New Orleans? I don't know. There was a Three shooting people. in Detroit where, where two cops were shot. Yeah, there's another one in, I think it's New Orleans, it said uh, three people, two people were killed, one was injured. Do we know what the, the circumstances are? I haven't seen anything else after okay. that again yet. Well, there was a shooting in Detroit uh, this morning, uh, or last night, early this morning, a uh, domestic violence case. They, get, they were called out to a domestic violence situation. A guy had invaded a, uh, somebody's house uh, looking for his girlfriend and he couldn't find her, and the police arrived, and as they walked into the, into the uh, uh, house, uh, he opened fire with a uh, hunting rifle, and he, he caught one of them in the neck and killed him. And the other one was shot in the leg, and he's in serious condition. I guess they wounded him, but uh, he escaped, and then they caught him later, but he was looking for his girlfriend. Domestic violence cases, ugly, ugly stuff. Anyway, so there's a lot of shooting going on, as much fun as that is. Uh, the jury listens uh, passively as the judge reads the instructions aloud, and they are almost never allowed to ask questions in the courtroom to clarify misunderstandings they may have about the law. This is really kind of strange. Jurors are not allowed to speak in, in, uh, in the court, despite the fact they're the ones that are going to have to make the decisions. Psychologists have been able to simplify jury instructions that have shown to be uh, easier to understand by jurors. Uh, several states have recently revised portions of their jury instructions. A good example is California. Um, California has an interesting situation. A large percentage of their population is, is Hispanic, uh, and they don't speak English very well. So this is kind of an interesting situation. Uh, I was doing educational research there. Who was this? Wait a minute, wait a minute. It was in California. Uh, that was 90... Wait a minute. 96. 96. I was doing educational research in, in uh, California, and we were going to all the junior high schools in the Los Angeles area. Um, all the public schools. I, we didn't go to any of the private schools. Um, and almost all the kids in the... Uh, public schools were Hispanic, almost everybody. Uh, very few African Americans, very few uh, Caucasians uh, in the public schools, they were almost all uh, Hispanic. So where did the, all the other kids go? You know, you, you talk about East LA, we went to East LA. We went to, to East LA, uh, which was kind of interesting because there, it, was, it was a thin-skinned area and you couldn't get in, you had to go through the guards to get into the junior high school. Uh, but uh, they had very, I mean, East LA is supposed to be 
primarily African American, but there were hardly any African American students there. They were they were almost all Hispanic. As curious as that is, even in a black neighborhood, they were almost all Hispanic. Why am I talking about this? Oh, we're talking about uh, uh, simplifying jury uh, instructions. And California was one of the primary states that did this. And the reason they did it is because they had so many people that really didn't speak English as well as, as other individuals. They spoke Spanish at home. Uh, so they had to revise their, their jury instructions. Although instructions are typically read just before the jury deliberates, uh, some states now require judges to provide preliminary instructions before the evidence is presented. That was weird. This thing just kicks off. There's always something new about Donald Trump every day. Yeah, that's because he's an actor rather than a he became the new most interesting man in the world. Mm. But it's so stupid. It's all for the wrong reason. <laughs> I, I, I went on to Yahoo News just to see what was going on. Um, the first thing that like kind of pops up was him saying he opened up a new Apple, MacBook Apple factory. It's been open for six years. And he just opened it. And he just opened it. Wow. Groundbreaking right that day. He's an amazing fellow, isn't he? <laughs> so they're like, he's just trying to up his, like, oh, new American jobs, I did this. And they're like, it's open six years ago. Mm. Interesting person. <laughs> Nobody said anything to him? Like, hey, everyone knows this is open. Trying to pay him to show up. The, there's that guy who owns the, the company. I guess he was standing right next to him and he was like, okay. He didn't react to it. He was like, I don't know what to say to that. Hmm. Maybe the bulb was burned out. I will get the other one. There's one up on the fifth floor. I'll be right back. It's exciting. <laughs> Don't forget the video's on, so whatever you guys say. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys choose your article or your reading? Um, for the paper? Yeah. Um, sociopaths and psychopaths and courts. Okay. Did you just use one of the articles from your article critique? Um, I asked him first if that was okay, and he said it was just fine. Oh, okay. it's. I think it's interesting. Yeah. It's, yeah, because they do get a, they get away with the polygraphs and interviews. It's interesting. Uh huh. So. I, I decided to do that. It's more for criminal justice. Mm. What about you? What you what you uh, choose? I just chose criminal justice. Criminal justice. Yeah. Okay. Ah, I see. I was thinking about doing one on like the Navajo Nation and the laws, and I'm like, that's so complicated. It, no, that's, <laughs> I didn't that's, even that's want to touch it. That's what I was going to. <laughs> that's what I was going to, and then I was just like, no, it's mm -hmm. it's a lot. It's a lot. 
And then it's like it changes for each um, agency, too, yeah. depending on how many officers or how many lawyers or attorneys or yep. detectives they have. Or if they have a federal agent instead of a detective in yeah. charge of something. Yeah, all the jurisdictions and yeah, it changes. bylaws and all the other stuff. All crazy for real. Mm -hmm. And then I just how the community handles things. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about like, if I was going to do that, I was going to go down to um, PD. Uh -huh. And I'm like, there's a good Do I want to do that? <laughs> Like, I'm just going to get different answers, and I'm like, aren't you supposed to all be on the same page? Let's get a wild goose chase. It is. Yeah. It, it is really difficult to find topics to write about for our our nation and, and from our perspective mm -hmm. without having to be, like, dive really, really deep into certain things and maybe even stepping on a few yeah. toes here and there just to try to get information and also be the bad guy for even asking. Yeah. Or even your traditional things, too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's like how do you how do you even approach just a simple yeah. five page paper? <laughs> so I guess everybody had like an idea or thought about doing yeah. one, and then they're like, no, no, no mine. It's <laughs> not gonna go the way I know I want it to go. So we'll just stick to the articles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually started working again, do they? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, I will not worry. Oh, I unplugged it, that's why. Would it commit suicide? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tragedy. <laughs> it seemed too much material between you and Marias. <laughs> and Sue. <Sima. laughs> uh, there's a rumor that Sue's coming back next semester to I teach see. adjunct. I seen her last week or two weeks ago having lunch with Miranda. So I would think so. Okay. You said Bruce needs help. Well, I know she's coming back after Christmas or after Thanksgiving mm -hmm. for that uh, some kind of presentation. Oh, okay. The presentation situation. Did you guys see that ASAP Rocky is one of the unlikely people that was part of the impeachment? Yeah. No. Because it's, it's, I read the article a little bit. It said something about like the time he went out to. Uh, was it Russia? It might have been Russia. He was in Sweden. He got arrested in Sweden for yeah, for brawling in the streets. He was he, somehow the correlation between him being out there and Trump going out there was it was some it, kind of correlation. So they, yeah, so they're bringing him into for questioning. That is so strange. <coughs> well, I don't know. Being from like before he became mayor, it's
he, he rents like these, these different things from these from rich people and he's, uh -huh. like, they do it just, just so they can kind of like, better their image. Like, yeah. They have so much money that they don't know what to do with it that they uh -huh. can't actually go out and do it themselves. Yeah. So, they, so they pay people pay to people. do these things or they let them borrow like stuff from theirs. You know? It's pretty crazy. I understand that. I mean, I know there are some people who make money and they get to a certain bracket of their tax and then they go and think they're giving money back to people when they hire people to do things for them but I think they don't understand like it's a really it's a great area there. Yeah, it's, there's, a, it's, it's, it's a great area. And there's like a certain detachment from what's happening out there to what they're really experiencing and what they see. <laughs> yeah, and it's like the reality too, like every everybody has their price. And everything, and pretty much everything and everyone is put for sale. Sorry, Bruce. What? You committed suicide. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's all right. Did you figure out the connection between ASAP Rocky and. and no, I, I just read that article real quick. I seen, it, I seen it pop up a couple of times on Facebook. And, I thought it was like those fake news. So, no, no. Uh, what happened was uh, ASAP Rocky uh, was arrested for brawling in the streets, uh, and he was thrown in jail. Yeah, he was convicted. So, because he was there, and because Trump didn't want him to be in jail, he kept calling Sondland. And when he talked to Sondland, every time he talked to Sondland about ASAP Rocky, he also talked to Sondland about. Uh, about the Biden investigation. Oh. Uh, so because he had so many conversations about ASAP Rocky, uh, it, uh, he had all these recorded uh, conversations about, uh, about Biden, about uh, investigating Biden. Oh, there you go. So what, he was kind of just brought into it? ASAP Rocky? Yeah. Uh, yeah, only because only because uh, he was the subject of the uh, of the conversation, or the beginning of the subject of the conversation. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, I committed suicide. That's kind of exciting. Um, okay. So what are we talking about? We're talking about that's crooked. <laughs> There we go. Let's see how the picture, what the picture looks like. Oh, I've lost it again. There it goes. There we go. Okay. Your OCD uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the delivery of jury instructions at the beginning of the trial rests on the notion of the primacy effect that instructions uh, will have the most beneficial effect if they are presented first. So the question is, uh, which is more important, the primacy effect or the recency effect? If it's a recency effect, of course, they give them at the end of the trial, and if it's the primacy effect, they give them at the beginning. Now, the reality is that when you're on a jury and uh, the, the case has something to do with manslaughter or whatever, they need to really define what manslaughter is. But a lot of times they don't do that until they give you the instructions. Like a shirt. Oh, thanks. It's Hawaiian. <laughs> uh, my wife bought me a shirt, and uh, I didn't think it was loud enough, so I, I bought this one. I, uh, I, like, I like loud things, obviously. You guys don't. I've got two of you in black and one of you in gray. Like it brings the color out of your eyes. <laughs> the, blue, the blue of my eyes. Uh, in this way, jurors know the, the rules of the trial and the requirements of the law before the trial commences, which makes a lot of sense if you think about it. It's nice to know why you're there and uh, what, what you're going to be listening to and how you should listen to the evidence. <clears throat> so the primacy effect makes a lot of sense. Uh, giving the instructions at the beginning of the trial makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. Forster Lee and, and Harowitz... Forrester Lee is one name, by the way. I don't want you to think that there's three of them. There's only two of them. Uh, reported that mock jurors were, uh, who received instructions at the beginning of the trial recalled and used more evidence uh, than uh, did jurors who were instructed after the evidence 
after the evidence was presented. So I, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, they know how to listen to uh, uh, to the to uh, the trial or the or all the evidence in the trial. Uh, jury nullification. Uh, this is the implicit power to acquit defendants despite evidence and judicial instructions to the contrary. Uh, jury nullification. This does happen from time to time. A jury will acquit somebody that seems just dead guilty, but they uh, they acquit them anyway. Research suggests that jurors tend to rely on their feelings and sentiments and to nullify the law only when the law seems unjust. Uh, this had happened with uh, marijuana laws. Um, <clears throat> There's a reason why the marijuana laws were so strict and why they were throwing people in jail just for smoking pot for an extended length of time. And the reason had to do with Another impeachment trial, as exciting as that is. Richard Nixon was the president of the United States. We had people that were, were demonstrating in the street. Uh, he thought that they were all uh, kids that were, that were whack, whacked out on pot and uh, speed. Uh, so he uh, made the uh, uh, drug laws a lot more strict. We started really enforcing them. And this was back in the 1970s. Well, they never stopped uh, because it, uh, they were able to arrest people and throw them in jail for an extended length of time. They thought that was a good idea. Uh, so they just, ex they just extended this. But it all started with Richard Nixon, Nixon, who didn't like the fact that all these kids were demonstrating outside the White House. He was pissed. And because of that, he decided he was going to crack down on drugs. <clears throat> and they did. And when they cracked down on drugs, they arrested a lot of kids. And they put him in jail, and that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted to get him off the street. Uh, so there were a lot of, of, of laws that were being, uh, that were being um, uh, enforced uh, that, uh, that didn't look like they were fair to juries. And of course, people have been complaining about it ever since. Research suggests that jurors tend to rely on their feelings and sentiments and to nullify the law only when the law seems unjust. And of course, that's what happened with the Nixon laws. What, what's your take on that whole, the, the bill that just passed by Congress? The MORE Act. Yeah. yeah. What? I don't know. Which, which act is that? What's the, going on? Um, Representative um, Jerry Nadler. Um, announced that his MORE Act was passed, which ends the federal prohibition of marijuana and acts restorative justice for com communities of color that continue to be devastated by our nation's failed war on drugs. Is what he said. The MORE Act. The MORE Act passed 24 to 10 after more than two hours of de debate, and it heads now to the full house. So it hasn't been passed. It hasn't been passed. No, it just passed. The, the, right now. the committee's Nadler's committee. I can't think of which, which one is Nadler's committee. The judiciary. Ju ju judiciary committee. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that ought to be interesting. Um, I'm guessing that it will pass in the House and that it will pass in the Senate. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. So that's what I think about. <laughs> it's going to pass in the House and not pass in the Senate. <clears throat> That's as far as it usually goes. Marijuana is real controversial. Um, there's a lot of reasons why. It really restructures your brain, especially if, you're, if your brain isn't, uh, hasn't reached its adult capacity yet. If you start smoking pot uh, at 18, uh, then between the ages of 18 and 25, when your brain actually uh, becomes uh, one solid mass and will not change again. Um, it restructures things. So from 18 to 25, it still is restructuring things. If you do it at age 12, when you've got a whole lot of brain restructuring to do, it really screws it up. Lowers your IQ. It makes you not want to do anything. <clears throat> Which, I don't know. I don't know how bad that is. It's, seems to be really bad to me. I keep thinking of, of the movie Idiocracy. Uh, and I have a feeling if we legalize marijuana, we're, gonna, we're headed, headed in that direction. 
Um, I told you the story of, of my son working in Colorado. They passed the marijuana law, and all of a sudden, nobody wanted to do anything. I mean, people were getting paid, but they weren't. They were just kind of, dude, you know, sitting around not doing anything. It was it just drove him nuts, and that's the reason they moved out of Colorado. He was working as a bartender in a, a bar, a bar and grill, <clears throat> and uh, he couldn't even. They couldn't get the waitresses to wait on people. They couldn't get the cooks to cook. Like he was running around doing everything. Uh, just kind of pissed him off. He's a real easygoing guy. He doesn't mind doing all the work. Some of the work. He just doesn't want to do all the work. <laughs> so he was, he was mixing drinks, and he was, he was opening beer bottles, and he was going back to the kitchen and cooking, and he was taking people's orders. He was a one-man show. <clears throat> as much fun as that was, which it wasn't at all. Jurors, uh, online activities, uh, web browsing and posting prior to, to, during, and after a trial raise concerns about whether a criminal defendant's Sixth Amendment right to a fair trial can be protected. Uh, jurors can, uh, for example, jurors can get access to information from unknown and unreliable sources, and this is kind of a problem. Um, and of course, uh, cell phones haven't been around that long. I mean, they, uh, the way that they work today, uh, they, they'll do everything for you. They're computers, they're, uh, uh, they are, they communicate, uh, you can tweet, you can, you can Facebook, you can do just about anything on a telephone now. Well, of course, judges were pretty old and they didn't understand how telephones work. Uh, there was the one uh, judge that uh, tried Manafort uh, who had never, uh, he didn't uh, use email, so I, he didn't understand. He didn't doesn't doesn't and didn't understand this stuff. As weird as that is, some courts now prohibit jurors use use of electronic devices during trials and other monitor uh, jurors' online activities. Uh, they had to do this during the Manafort trial. They had to do this during the Roger Stone trial. And the reason is because uh, people were uh, being hired. Uh, individuals that worked in the court or jurors, potentially, were being hired by the news agencies to tweet them and to uh, email them information about what was going on in the trial. This is against the law. This is immediate information getting out to the news agencies. And of course, one agency was trying to scoop the other agency, and because of this, uh, they had to uh, they had to ban all electronic uh, uh, devices in the uh, uh, certainly in the jury room, but also in the uh, court. No computers, no cell phones. Uh, once upon a time, of course, before cell phones uh, did everything, uh, you could have a cell phone in there if you wanted, but you couldn't have a computer because they didn't want you to communicate with anybody. Uh, complex civil cases often require the jury to render decisions on causation, liability, and damages for multiple plaintiffs, uh, multiple defendants, or both. Uh, that's why I hate this thing. Ah, come on. Criminal cases, the use of forensic evidence contributes to the case complexity, and of course, a lot of times uh, we're dealing with some really complex stuff. Uh, if you've ever seen Erin Brockovich, the movie about Erin Brockovich, um, she found that, uh, and of course, this is the biggest problem. We got a chemical company, and they're putting they're putting all kinds of waste uh, into the water supply, uh, but you have to prove that the the this waste is dangerous to people. Uh, that it is what has caused the cancer. This is what happened with, uh, with uh, uh, actually here, uh, the uranium. And this is one of the reasons uh, why the, uh, of course, that's the federal government. The federal government owns all the uranium in the United States. And it was, you would have had, would have, had to have sued the federal government. Well, I, what did I read the other day? 115, there's 115 uranium mines on the reservation. And there's all those wastes, uh, piles, and whatnot. 
And when it rains, like it did yesterday, it just washes right down into the water supply. Uh, something else happened to your water supply. It was a couple of years ago, and there was a river. Something. This old spill going into. And then nobody, nobody would use it. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. The King Gold Mine spill. Yeah. It was from Silverton, Colorado. And it had ar arsenic it had in it. Yeah. Metals and you know, um, different toxins. And, and so all the grass that uh, that water supplied, uh, they couldn't use it for hay because it would poison the horses or, or the cattle or the livestock, whatever it was. Anyway, so you guys had a. A problem with hay that year because you couldn't get hay from Colorado or from the area of New Mexico that, that it washed down into. Yeah, really serious stuff. <clears throat> so people don't understand this. The other problem is, and, and uh, this is what's going on in the Fort Belknap Reservation. I hate to talk about those guys again, uh, but they have a gold mine that is right up above the reservation. It's on a mountain. And uh, it's, it's very similar to the situation that you guys had at the other gold mine. They used uh, arsenic leaching uh, to get the gold out. Um, and they had these big uh, pools of, uh, of arsenic waste. Now there's a, a select amount of arsenic in your water supply anyway. And, and, there is, and it doesn't hurt the body. But the question is how much? How much can there be? And of course, uh, they started having problems with uh, lupus, which is an autoimmune disease. Now, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So is lupus, lupus theoretically is genetic. Can it be caused by something else? And the answer was, yeah, it was probably being caused by the arsenic. The closer somebody lived to the arsenic leaching uh, waste areas, uh, the more likely they were to get lupus. And of course, the, gold, the, the company that owned the gold mine uh, said, no, that's not true at all. This is just, this is a family, and this family has this genetic proclivity for lupus. And they just happened to live near the gold mine, that's what they said. <clears throat> and they lost the case, but then the gold mine, uh, it was the Pegasus mine, the infamous Pegasus mine. Anyway, the, uh, the uh, uh, company closed. They, declared bankruptcy closed. And then they they just closed that company and opened another company. That's what they did. So they were they didn't they lost the case but they didn't have to pay any money. I know that's exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They didn't have any more assets. They took the assets and they moved them to another company. And they didn't even clean up after themselves. And they didn't have to clean up after yeah. themselves, exactly. And this is this is what this is what big companies do. Uh, many arguments uh, have been made against the use of juries in complex cases. Uh, the evidence is too difficult for a layperson to understand. The general information load on the juries is excessive because of the large number of witnesses that we're dealing with. Uh, this happened in the Ford, uh, Ford case. This happened in the AT&T case that I was talking about before. Um, <clears throat> lots, and I have no idea why I put this lady's picture up here. I have no idea who she is. Um, I, I was looking, I was going through this and I was like, why didn't I put that picture? What does that have to do with it? Rodman's ex-wife? <laughs> it doesn't look like one of my ex-wives. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like one of my ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> or fortunately, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of blondes. Uh, because of the voir dire uh, procedures that result in exclusive Exclusion of jurors uh, with some understanding of or interest in the case, less capable jurors are left to decide. And I, of course, I have no idea what she has to do with voir dire or I don't know. I just put a picture up there. Maybe you thought it was Elle Woods from Legally Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin. I mean, that's an old, old movie. Noise DeMario. Oh, Rosie DeMario. That's who it is. Rosie DeMario. I have no idea. Sometimes I do things and I don't know why I do it. <laughs> now usually there's a, there's a rationale to the pictures I put up. 
But this one I still haven't figured it out. But I'll, I'll think about it. She's not unattractive. But I don't think I put her, I just put a picture of a pretty lady up here. <clears throat> oh, we're not supposed to say pretty lady. Jeremiah shook, shook his finger at me yesterday. You can't call a woman beautiful anymore. I, I don't know. You can't say anything anymore. <laughs> you can't even compliment a woman yeah, anymore. Yeah, like sexual harassment. Past time me too. It's sexist. We're just really sensitive. I don't think I'm going to be sued by a picture. No. I mean, you could. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> Some jurors are willing and able to attend to the complicated nature of the testimony. Others are overwhelmed uh, from the very beginning. Uh, jurors are confounded by the presence of multiple parties and claims. Uh, jury aides, uh, such as written summary uh, statements of expert testimony and the opportunity to take notes uh, can enhance the quality of jurors' decision making. So if we allow them to take notes, uh, in some, in some uh, states you are not allowed to take notes. Um, as weird as that sounds, what was I going to say? Oh, um, if you watch the impeachment trial, it's really kind of fascinating. Because even the, uh, the news people are starting to say they have so many witnesses that it's hard to keep them straight. And so, um, they, and they, so they're not mentioning people's names anymore. Uh, because they don't, want to, they don't want people uh, who are watching uh, the impeachment trial to get confused. Because there's so many of them. Uh, today, Hale is going to, uh, to testify. Yesterday, Holmes uh, testified. Sonder, Sondland uh, testified yesterday, and he said there was a quid pro quo, by the way. Not that that's important. Well, it is important, but <laughs> not that anybody cares except me. <clears throat> and uh, Anderson Cooper, it's like we're the only two people that care. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the assumption of a blank slate, uh, courts assume that jurors can put aside any preconceptions of about defendant guilt or the merits of civil defendants and plaintiffs uh, when forming judgments. And uh, so the assumption is that, that, see, this picture makes sense. She took her brain out because she's a blank slate. And then the next picture makes sense. That's a blank <laughs> slate. There we go. The courts assume that through jury selection procedures, the ideal of open-minded jurors can be achieved. However, consider that attorneys are motivated to select jurors who are favorable to their own side. And of course, that kind of screws things up uh, just a tad. It is impossible for anyone to entirely free, uh, be entirely free of influence by past experiences and resulting prejudices. And there's not a whole lot you can do about that. And we saw that down south uh, for about 100 years after the Civil War. Lots of things were going on for, uh, for, uh, for a couple hundred years they had uh, used African Americans as slaves, and then all of a sudden the slaves were free, and now they were supposed to treat them as, as if they were equals. Well, of course, that didn't happen in the South, and it's still not happening to, today uh, in select states. But we still have a large population of African Americans living in the South. And unfortunately, they are not treated very well in the South. When they come north, they're treated more equally, but um, there is still prejudice uh, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, United States. One of the problems we had in World War II, they wouldn't allow African Americans to be combat troops. Uh, they had to be transport troops uh, or supply troops um, <clears throat> until we ran out of men. And then we decided, wait a minute, maybe we can do this. Maybe we should allow African Americans to fight. <laughs> and a number of them won the Congressional Medal of Honor, of course. Uh, one soldier's as good as the next soldier. Uh, jury bias is a juror's predisposition to interpret and understand uh, information based on past experience. Oh, my, the, the whole point, the reason I mentioned African American soldiers was because uh, the biggest problem was uh, Southern uh, officers. Southern officers did not want to serve with, with uh, Southern, with, with black uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, 
Uh, so there was that prejudice that took place. And it was an old prejudice from, you know, 100 years ago, as stupid as that sounds. But it was there. There was not a whole lot that could be done. Isn't it like how, or what's going on now because they said no more um, transgender people or gay people in the military? Because people have, apparently other people have a problem fighting alongside people who are, like, who are either gay or transgender. Other people from other countries are kind of getting in on it and they're like, Really? Like you guys are gonna be picky about that? Like I would think. Yeah, I have other other armies don't yeah. care, uh, which is pretty fairly logical. Uh, one of the reasons that um, when I when I first entered the military, it was against against military regulations to be gay and be in the military. And the reason was, and this was the rationale. The rationale was that it's easy for a spy to come and turn you because he can use that against you to get you to spy for them. Because you wouldn't want that information disclosed. It was against the, it was against the uh, military law. It was also against the law in several states. So you couldn't be gay in several, several states in the, in the United States. So a lot of people, and, and not only that, but there was a lot of prejudice against, against gay people. To the extent that uh, if, if I'm a gay lawyer, all of a sudden nobody, I don't have any clients. Okay, that's what was going on. And then during the Clinton administration, and of course this is in the 90s, things are getting a little bit looser. Um, he said, uh, well, I don't care if you're gay, just don't tell anybody you're gay. And it was a, a um, the idea was don't ask, don't tell. Okay, nobody could ask you if you were gay or not. Mm -hmm. uh, before, they could, they could uh, you know, put you in a chair and query you for, for hours and not let you sleep and to find out if you were gay. That's the way it was before. Remember, we were afraid of spies. Okay, so during the Clinton administration, it was don't ask, don't tell. And then who became president after that? It was George Bush. And Bush, of course, was more conservative. And so he, he threw that out. He said, well, no, we can't have any gay people in the military. And then the next guy that came in was Barack Obama. And he was a little bit more liberal, and so he said, "No, let's let's just let." Uh, and the other thing that was going on, females couldn't uh, uh, fight in combat. Yeah. Okay. No combat arms, as far as the females were concerned. So then Barack Obama becomes president, and when he became president, of course, he said, "You know, these are all these rules are stupid. Uh, we live in the 21st century. Uh, it's 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 okay to be gay." and we will allow those people into the military. That includes transgender people. Then, then we got President Trump. And President Trump, of course, wanted to overturn everything that, Trump, that, that Obama did. So what he said was, no more gay and transgender people in the military. So that's where we are right now. As far as military people are concerned, if you've ever been in combat, you really don't care who this guy has sex with, the, the guy standing next to you, as long as he pulls the trigger at the right time and he has your back. I, and it's been that way forever. I mean, we've had tra gay and transgender people in the military forever, and nobody has cared because they are soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And that's all you care about. All you care about is living to the next engagement, as it were. So all that makes sense? Yeah. Isn't that painful? <laughs> <laughs> and now what females are allowed to, uh, in combat arms. Uh, for the longest time we didn't have, we had all these female pilots that were really good pilots, but they couldn't fly fighters. They had to fly transport planes or, or communication. Uh, they couldn't fly in combat, but now they can. So. So there you go. And other countries, of course, they've been doing this forever. There's a new movie out about an England or about a, an Indian, Asian Indian uh, princess that decided she was going to, to put together a, uh, a a regiment of female fighters to take on the British. Well, I, I haven't seen the movie, and I'm not really sure what what goes on. But it was like a group of Amazons, you know, and that's what she does. She puts together all these. Ladies, and the British, of course, don't want to fight women, 
so it, it gets kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know what uh, is the premise of the movie other than that. And I don't know if it's fictional or. or I, I think it's based on a true story, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but the, the British had a problem, you know, killing women. Everybody has a problem killing. You're not supposed to kill women in war. I know, but now that they're soldiers, it's okay. God, you can't do anything. I know. You, you can't even say that somebody's pretty. Uh, juror bias is a juror's predisposition to interpret and understand information based on past experience. Because bias is inevitable, uh, most jurors come to this task with either a pro-prosecution bias or a pro-defense bias. And of course, if they're pro-defense, the defense attorney wants to make them their, their, jur their jurors. And if they're pro-prosecution, uh, the prosecution wants them uh, to be jurors. Now, of course, we've talked about jury selection and we've talked about uh, uh, analyzing juries. Um, and this is one of the things that they do, and demographics, of course. So males are more likely to, uh, to accept violence as, as a given. Uh, this came out yesterday, didn't it? It had something to do with, with domestic violence. They had a jury of men, and they were talking about rape. They were trying to define what rape was. And the male definition of rape was different from the female definition of rape. Something else happened. In Spain, oh, the, the situation in Spain, they had a young lady that was drunk and she passed out and five men had sex with her while she was passed out. So she, oh, yeah, I saw yeah that. so she brought a uh, suit against them uh, for rape and they were acquitted because she didn't fight. Mm. And the definition of rape in Spain has to do with, with being forced to do something. And of course, they didn't have to force her because she was unconscious. It's pretty hard to fight back when you're that, that's, that's a good the point, but that's, that's still the definite, that's the law. So they, all five of them were acquitted of rape, despite the fact they had sex with an unconscious woman. So if they forced her to drink and then she passed out, no. that's not rape? Yeah. What? No, that's, see, that's not, that's not what happened. Nope. What happened was <laughs> she got drunk, she passed out, and they, and they raped her, or they had sex with her. And in Spain, that's not rape. As horrible as that is. In the military, you can't have sex with somebody who is drunk. Because they can't consent to sex. So it's always sexual assault. This is new, because in the old days, this was a game that select males played. They'd get a lady drunk, and then they would have their way with her. And and, uh, and then they said, well, you know, it was consensual sex. Well, it wasn't consensual sex. She was drunk as a skunk. Well, does this work vice versa? Because it can't, I mean. What, what do you mean? Like, if a woman does that to a guy, is that still considered rape? Or if sexual harassment? Rape one guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no? Here's the problem. Okay, here's the problem. This has to do with sexual response. The probability that he'll respond sexually is fairly low well if he's drunk and passed out. He ain't gonna, it, it ain't gonna work. Probably. That's just the way it works. <clears throat> so women can't rape a drunk man because the man probably is not functional. Shakespeare said this several times. <laughs> Well, what if she does like what Cardi B does and just sits on his face? I don't have any idea <laughs> who Cardi B is or, or what she did. Oh, oh yeah, okay, I know what you're going to talk about. Yeah, Cardi B came out with it. I think she accidentally like blurted it out, right? Mm -hmm. She drugged people and she stole money and all that. Oh, so oh, when... Is that end up? <laughs> well, wait a minute, she was a and call girl. She was a call girl, right? She was a stripper. Okay, and so she would, drunk men would try to have sex with her, them. and then they, uh, she roofied them. Oh, so they were knocked out. Yeah. Well, they were pretty non-functional anyway. I mean, but she had a lot of 
And, and th see, this is the whole point. I mean, if you, if you uh, roofie a guy... That's okay. Well, no, that's okay. <laughs> nothing's that's okay. Going, nothing's going to happen because he's going to be unconscious and he can't... There, there is such a thing as spontaneous erection, but I mean, the rea the, it's not going to be a prolonged erection. So it's not like you can have sex with it. An unconscious man. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> but you can have sex with an unconscious woman. But does it make sense? Because you can still do other things. <laughs> sure you can. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so yeah. So that's yeah, why she's so saying I was so using, you're okay. I was using the Bill, I was using the Bill Clinton. Uh, okay. The Bill Clinton uh, defense. <laughs> It's not genital genital sex. It's not. It oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. All right. And that's what you're talking about. I assume. <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> I just love it. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we won't go. We won't go beyond that. You can ask Jeremiah. Since this is his area of expertise. What class is he teaching? Human sexuality. Cool, okay. Okay. Yeah. And we are going to change that into a 300 level class so that it will count toward graduation. Oh, nice. But we can't do it Sure, you can. We'll change the checklist. So it's not on this checklist? Not yet. No. Okay. Not until we change it. Until I think next semester, maybe? So that you only have to take seven 300 level classes and you can choose whichever one you want to take. It's not going to change the 415 class. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do about that. So could I possibly change one of my classes next semester into human sexuality? Because next semester, next semester is all my 300 level classes that I have. After that, it's 400. No. Next semester. No. We're not going to teach human sexuality next semester. Uh, it's a fall class. Personal predispositions, uh, views, uh, for example, views about the death penalty may also affect the way that evidence is, is uh, evaluated. This is my favorite. Thing one and thing two. They're my favorite characters. <laughs> I want to be thing one when I grow up. When jurors are exposed to a... <laughs> maybe I already am. <laughs> when jurors are exposed to a new piece of evidence, uh, they evaluate the evidence in a way that is consistent with their current verdict preferences. This is predecisional distortion rather than in, a, in an objective fashion. And this can be a problem, of course. Jur, jury bias. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why I put thing one up there. But I don't have thing two later on in, in, the, uh, in the lecture. Do jurors' bias, uh, biases predispose them to favor one side over another in a civil case? Research suggests that sympathy plays only a minor role in deliberations. In addition, the general public is quite suspicious of and sometimes downright hostile to civil plaintiffs. They're just after the money, and because of that, it pisses them off. Uh, potential jurors do not think highly of civil defendants either. Um, let me talk, oh, well, let me ask you a question. Uh, Hunter Biden was getting $50,000 a month uh, for uh, being on the board of Burisma, that, that, uh, that company. Now, the Republicans keep saying, look at all the money he was making. How much money is that, $50,000? How much is, is, is that, a, how much money was he making in a year? If he was making $50,000 a month, how much was he making in a year? About half a million. Mm -hmm. uh, $600,000. $600,000, yeah. $600,000. Now, six hundred thousand dollars to you and me is pretty is a lot of money, but when you're talking to millionaires, six hundred thousand dollars isn't all that much money. It's chunk change, exactly. But they keep saying that it was so much money, fifty thousand dollars. He's making fifty thousand dollars a month, but it only multiplies out to six hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, if you don't spend any of that six hundred thousand dollars and you just kind of pile it up. And then, you know, you work for a couple of years, you got $1.2 million. But that's not the way it works, is it? Mm -hmm. You gotta buy a car, you gotta buy a house, you gotta buy food, you gotta pay your kids orthodonture, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> anyway, so it, it turns out it's not that much money. 
So statistically, isn't there like, when people make over a certain amount of money that generally they're just unhappy? Like? Yeah, pretty much, unfortunately. Because money doesn't buy happiness, I mean. You're right, happiness buys happiness. <laughs> You, yeah. I don't want to have like a lot of money, just don't tell Scott that. Please. Enough to. <laughs> I saw this meme the other day. It's like I just want to make enough to have the backyard my dog deserves. <laughs> right? You know, and it's like exactly. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't. It doesn't buy happiness, and it makes you paranoid mm -hmm. because a lot yeah. of people call you on the phone. They want you to donate money to this. I would just have my money under a mattress. In my luck, my house is going to burn down. And there all you my go. money and back to square one. <sighs> no, what you do is, is, is you get coins. They don't burn. Don't, <laughs> That's true. Don't, don't put it in paper <laughs> money. Put it in coins. Big old sack of coins. <laughs> just have it all countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Big pile of gold. <laughs> <laughs> Potential jurors do, do not think highly of civil defendants either. Uh, so they don't like the companies and they don't like the people that sue the companies. Uh, they think everybody's just after money and it, it kind of pisses everybody off. Do juries uh, give larger awards when a defendant is wealthy? Jury damage awards are consistently higher in products, products liability and medical malpractice cases than in automobile negligence cases. Uh, the former group typically involves wealthy defendants, the latter uh, does not. So if we're talking about, we're talking about a company that makes three or four billion dollars, what's the richest company in the, in the world now? It's not, uh, it's not Amazon anymore. It's ExxonMobil. Is, it, is the richest company in the world. Yeah. Okay, I just listened to a book by Rachel Maddow that uh, taught, it's called Blowout, where they're fracking and they're destroying all the, what time is it? Am I doing okay? Five minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where, where they're frack, they're, they're, they're creating all of this um, natural gas by fracking. Uh, but fracking, of course, in order to frack something, you have to pump, pump like a million gallons of this really, it's water mixed with, Sludge is what it is, and it's it contaminates. But it's a million gallons. I mean, it doesn't work unless you pump this stuff in there, and then some of it comes back out. So what do you do with this stuff? So you get all this natural gas, but at the same time, you're contaminating the environment. Not only that, but it causes earthquakes. I know. So. Now, and sinkholes, exactly. Now, now ExxonMobil is the richest company in the world because of, of fracking. That's the good news. But they're fracking up in, in the Arctic, and, and they're not exactly sure what that's going to do to anything. Well, hello, the polar bears and the seals. I mean, how are they not knowing that's that? That's a whole other ecosystem in its own. Oh, see, you care about animals. You're not supposed to care about animals. Yeah. You're only supposed to care about humans. Humans are the supposed to care about polar bears. So self righteous. <sighs> I'm <laughs> telling you, we're just going to use up all these resources and it's going to go back to way back in the days with wagon days, and that's the way that it should be. What? Because we're just, we have like all of these things like all you can eat. We don't need to be eating all we can eat. <laughs> like, that's why we have diabetes and high blood pressure and all these things. It's like, I don't know. Enough is not enough. In any enough is never story. enough. It's enough crazy is never enough. The U.S. Uh, I see this video. It says the U.S. is kind of like the main centrum of um, buffets. That's where basically where it started. And buffets. Yeah. Smorgasbords. No, it was in Sweden. Yeah. So it's, like, so it's just like they're saying that it happens more here than kind of like anywhere else. Than like, the other I never eat at a buffet. Yeah. Well, the thing is, it's like, okay, it's one thing to have a buffet and then it's like, but then they just toss out all that food. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they just can't load it up and take it to a shelter or something. To me. If you there know? is a shelter to give the food to. Have so, you seen Wally? That's where we're going <laughs> to Yeah, literally. That's where we're going to Isn't that the robot? Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. 
or like they're like they made robots to pick up all the trash and to clean up the earth while humans went off into space and we got fat. Exactly. And we couldn't sit in chairs man. anymore. We don't walk, <laughs> walk anymore. Go men walking like a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the movie? No, I haven't. Watch the movie! Watch the movie. <laughs> so, I have a question, Bruce. Yes. A long time ago, I mean, I'm not saying you're ancient, but <laughs> like, because when I watch shows, and I like old black and white shows, I noticed that when people went out to a restaurant back then, they didn't have menus. There was an option between two things that the right. chef was cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, man, we're just really spoiled. Well, yeah. Like in a lot of ways, yeah. yeah. And it's like, do we just think that the Earth is going to continue to provide and provide and provide with sure. the overpopulation and all this stuff? Like, I mean, it's the same problem that they had in Greece. It's the same problem that they had in Rome. Uh -huh. They just thought that they were the center of the universe. The same problem they had in China. So it's just, I don't know. I try to have these conversations and I'm just like, well, we're not there yet. Let's just, I'm like, I don't know, but I'm yeah. having grandchildren. The, the civilization is going to break down, just like it has uh -huh. in Rome and in Greece and in China and, and any place else. You know, the Holy Roman Empire in, in uh, Central Europe broke down. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's coming. So it's, good. it's coming. Technically, it has started already, technically, because you know, we developed reading and, you know, we're, we got pretty advanced, but you can see the, you know, the downfall of our intelligence considering that we're going back to hieroglyphics, so emojis. Mm -hmm. So we can speak basically with emojis. <laughs> so people are saying like, we're just going downhill again with our, our intelligence. We're just going to go back to sticks and stones again. That's how, <laughs> it started with here first and then that's, that's we can get to the problem. Well, yeah, I can see all over again. <laughs> I mean, you, you get to the point where you don't have to think anymore. You've got slaves that do all your work. I mean, that's what happened in Rome. That's what happened in, in China and, and in Greece. Uh, so what are we doing to make ourselves stupid? Well, we're legalizing marijuana, and we know well, that it's screwed. That it, that makes you stupid. I don't think that's the whole thing, too. We're also investing too much time in technology, which is taking away from our intelligence, too. We've got we've got robots that, that sweep the damn floor. I even saw a commercial on. last night, and it's one of those where it's vacuum. I'm like, or she can just get off her ass and sweep her. Exactly. <laughs> like, get off her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. We We're are all going to be those babies trying to walk around. <laughs> exactly. Uh <-huh. laughs> so I'm just like, am I the only one that thinks this way? Like, Evidently not. I guess we got a whole classroom full of people, <laughs> but there's only five of us, so. <laughs> that, we represent the better five. <laughs> that's why tonight I will lift weights and tomorrow I will run five miles. Because I don't want to be the fat guy that, <laughs> that walks around. Like One step at a time, Bruce. You know? <laughs> One mile at a time for me. <laughs> People are so lazy, yeah. and, and we we, expect, we think we we deserve stuff, and we don't. What do we deserve? <laughs> <laughs>